an honor to take the stage uh, following Mr. Sundar here, and you know I'm really privileged to join along uh, the other keynote speakers. Though the thing is still not working, but we can talk. So you know there's there's quite a larger audience here, and uh, a lot of youngsters and experienced people around me too. So I'll you know try to give my best here. Though I he he tried to express me with a lot of you know things at my back. I don't have those many. I leave you leave it up to your judgment. So the topic is uh, cold chain. I would rather call it cold chain plus because cold chain is already there for long. And uh, the technologies we are talking today are uh, very, to some, they're very new, to some, they are realistic. For some, like, that still doesn't make sense. Before we actually begin, you already heard that blockchain as a keyword in there, then IoT. IoT is like familiar already has been there. Blockchain, how, how many of you think, uh, you know, how many years? It's been there already. Like you know, let's start with that thing. If you know blockchain, just raise your hands. But not the old school style, as the gentleman said already. How many years it has been there? Anybody? Yeah, please, gentleman on the corner. Ten years. Okay. So anybody has got any other number uh, against it? No numbers. I would say like since the beginning of computer networks. Don't you believe so? You know, it's just a word. It's been there for very long already. You know, people say it's decentralization and all. But what I believe is networks, since the beginning of it, it was always there. But we couldn't see it the same way we are seeing it today. And yes, no doubt, it's not a bad thing. It takes time. So finally, the truck arrived. So... Uh, so this, this technology is not new in terms of how it is designed or to be implemented or to be understood. But yes, in terms of, you know, those fascinating keywords and technology jargons which we use nowadays. So, you know, forgive us people. So let's start with, you know, understanding what it is actually, you know, initially. This is just a keyword and it doesn't help. One narrative is like most people say blockchain is about Bitcoin. Bitcoin is blockchain. B blockchain is Bitcoin. But is it so? No, it is beyond that. Cryptocurrencies is just like one kind of an implementation or you can say a use case implemented out of blockchains. But this is beyond that. What we're going to do is we're going to explore how. And before we're going to explore how, we're going to talk around a few keywords which are important when we say blockchain. The, the, a blockchain is a list of transactions shared between multiple parties where the new transactions are added at the end never deleted, never changed. Some people call it, this is a specific feature, immutability. But I have a different opinion around immutability. But, you know, immutability is a feature people say you cannot delete records or cannot change them. I say you can change them, but though they'll still be recorded. So we've been talking around immutability, you know, blockchain keeping, uh, you want me to keep it a bit closer? Okay. So immutability uh, is just a factor which, you know, blockchain has, and it has got different ideas to look forward to. You can uh, say, like, never to delete or change anything once added to a ledger. Ledger is nothing but more than uh, a different kind of a distributed database, which is, like, shared among multiple parties. Uh, multiple parties are nothing but you can call them, like, multiple servers in your own terminologies, multiple nodes. Some people say multiple computer machines or devices, you can say it includes even IoT devices. And, you know, when you can imagine when, you know, these many devices are talking to each other consistently and sharing everything they have. Some people say this is duplicacy, but some people say it is not a single point of failure in that sense. And we all were, you know, been in the last two, three years fighting for redundancy and all. When cloud arrived, everybody was talking about redundancy and all. So, you know, how blockchain and IoT can assist in a supply chain solution or specifically in a cold chain supply solution is a topic which is now in talks a lot. How many of you understand what cold chain is? Like, if, yeah, please, if you can, like, shout it aloud in few words. Yeah, thank you very much for that. Those two keywords, pharmaceutical and food chain, food, food product lines, these are important product lines. So as you have, you know, mentioned those, and also he mentioned the key points, you know, some, some factors which are really important, their transportation, their handling, their storage. Apart from that, uh, there are so many other things too, like, you know, uh, 
fake products because you don't want a drug delivered to your hospital which you are being you know served at is fake and you don't want a drug delivered to your doorsteps which is fake or which is expired already nowadays we are too much into home delivery so that's a hazard nowadays so you know this is not just about storing making sure this this gets delivered but also making sure fake drugs are not out there expired drugs are not out there and uh, few other more things so you know we were talking somewhere around like generic you know problems we are facing and we know by you know by our daily usage or routine so that's where you know counterfeiting and all these are the things but apart from that as you spoke about you know uh, having the transportation been taken care of like uh, temperatures humidity pressure there are so many factors around food you don't want your ice cream to you know spoil up on the way before even get it gets delivered to you so that's where iod comes into the picture because these are you know parameters which you don't which you don't feed into a database without you know fetching them from the real uh, real time uh, environment like you don't uh, you don't measure a truck's temperature which is carrying some drugs or some ice creams for you without an without an iot device inside it placed and feeding this information continuously to some and when i say some now this is where i stop i can say some cloud based server somewhere i can say some other machine somewhere but but i i would rather say blockchain some blockchain node over there and yes we'll get to it why blockchain node over there why not some centralized cloud server over there How, what difference it could actually make if we'll push this information from a truck running somewhere transporting our drugs or food and push it to uh, an amazon or you know some other azure cloud server but running blockchain instead of running a centralized application uh, th there there we were talking about those things i had to move move away like to so many things just to cover it up that's being honest and let's see if this thing works too no never mind is it working yeah oh man so finally everything got back in place so these are the terms i think we have already gone through them most of you understand what you know multiple machines are what multiple servers are how do you connect them and you know decentralization is nothing about using the same old protocol stacks or networking capabilities of ours and building more more different high level protocols and algorithms around them to make these machines talk to each other share their data replicating them in some smart sense of you know delivering and adding immutability to it tamper proof making it tamper proof that's what blockchain is all about so this is a fancy term if you read it and if you understand it it's like pretty simple this is how actually it is you see i i already talked about uh, you know multiple machines talking to each other these are not mandatorily only the servers your mobile phones your you know handheld devices even your laptops everything in participate you must have used torrents haven't you like it's illegal but you we we all you know watch movies and you know see download games and applications pirated stuff so torrent is nothing but a p2p stuff isn't it like there's no server nobody can shut it down my laptop is syncing with somebody's laptop my data is being shared replicating or you know making a smart use of it but this is not all of it so but i mentioned block this is you know uh, torrent stuff because it's p2p so these machines these devices they are connected to each other directly there's no you know authorizing party in between a single party i'll correct myself here not any authorization party but not only single authorization party and then you got like a distributed shared ledger as a core component it has got a chronological order you know the transactions keep happening and what you call a thing a transaction probably you know minakshi uh, post me will cover this too a transaction is nothing but you know recording something which is happening what else do we call it i don't have any you know better definition uh, than this i raise my hand i record it somewhere it's a transaction you know i'm talking to you we we did we have gone through a lot of mess a few minutes before that's a transaction you recorded it somewhere you're going to tell your friends oh man that conference was a mess it started pretty bad <laughs> but i believe like that's the best start we could have got it's a transaction i have recorded nobody can change it now that's because it's on the blockchain and if you can change it this is not wise this is not smart that's all we don't want to happen so these ledgers are recording those transactions in in a chronological order and it's not just like some re, um, mere amount of you know textual data or some other things you can store files as well torrent is an example and it it works on ipfs 
Then there are smart contracts. We have logics, you know, built upon several multiple languages, platforms, and added to some amount of data and working and functioning. But you know, in, in, in most typical systems, we can change those logics because these are centralized. If I change those logics and I have built an application, I can change that logic in my application, you know. So, you know, I'm actually changing the logic which is running the business. It may affect so many things. So what if I can, you know, embed this logic inside the ledger itself and it is spreading itself. And it's, you know, if you, if you try to upgrade this logic, this logic cannot be upgraded on one of those single machines. If, you got, if you're running 10 servers, you gotta Im implement it and, and you know, you gotta change this on all those 10 machines. But it's not you, you is the wrong word here. It's not us who's gonna do it. It's not a developer, it's not a deployer. You, you have to, you know, publish it to one of those nodes in blockchain and it spreads itself with the consensus. Consensus, oh my God, another word. I'm adding complicacy, sentence after sentence. I'm not being wise, forgive me for this. So consensus is like, you know, agreement. We agreed to be here at the same time. We agreed to do, you know, transition to pay to this, you know, uh, dairy owner of ours, to the newspaper guy. Or if we pay to this guy or pay to the society charges, we are in consensus that like everybody is paying the same charges. And, you know, this guy cannot charge, charge us more than what he's charging some other guy. But we don't know it in real life. But in, in blockchain nodes, the machines which are talking to each other, they build a proper consensus. They talk to each other. They make sure nobody tampers data on a single machine and then it, it's not being reflected to other. It can be easily caught. That's the real advantage. So you, what you got out of it is trust. This system is trustworthy. You're not worried like who tampered, when tampered. Even if tampered, you'll always get a catch. You'll always get to know. So that's why this business logic in, in, in the form of smart contract travels along the blockchain. It's embedded. So it's not like somewhere remotely hosted in a single machine if somebody tweaks or hacks it and can actually modify things. He has to go through a lot more than that. And you know, what it achieves us is cost, a lot of saving on the cost. Transparency, I don't need to say why. Greater security, one aspect which I missed until now is encryption, though this is very obvious, so if I'll talk, you'll say, well, there's no need to talk about it. But encryption is there for very long, and yes, we are using it in blockchain too. It's, you know, encryption and blockchain, network and security, they go along from ages, and it's happening too. And then faster settlements. This is uh, more on the business side, like what happens with faster settlements, like, you know, if, why, why online payments came up? Why, you know, why, why these, these technologies are pumping up? Because I don't want to go to the Airtel store, say like recharge my phone, pay him myself, and then come back to home again. No, those recharge vouchers are gone. Now I can do it online. I can pay my bills, I can do everything. But how it is happening? Because of online payments. But there's next level to it. This is happening, but without trust. And because, you know, in, in supply chain, let's, let's talk about supply chain now. Let's move on to the truck in specific. In supply chain, what happens is somebody else is carrying my goods for me. This guy is logistics. We call him logistics partner. He's carrying my goods for me. I don't know where he's right now and if he has delivered or not. So I got to talk to the other end, the warehouse at the other end. Like if the goods are delivered, okay, sir, they have got the, they just, they just, I have just received the goods. So then I'll have to make the payment to the logistics partner beyond this point only. I cannot do it before because, because I don't trust this guy. What if he, you know, loses this, this consignment or damages this consignment in the middle of, you know, this transportation, then I'll have to focus upon insurance and all, a lot of things. You know, I have to insure my goods and all. So, you know, the more we talk about trust, the more the complexity is. And the more we talk about establishing trust, less the complexity is. Like, the, like do we have a trust among us? Like. <laughs> So, you know, from this point, I really, uh, you know, would like to know from you guys, you know, have I changed your understanding about blockchain until now a bit? Or maybe added clarity to it? Yes. Nothing. So, you know, Bitcoin is a use case. Blockchain is a narrative. Technology is still the same. This is the conclusion with which we are moving on to the next slide and talk about the types of it. You know, fine, we got networks, we got machines running out, we got, you know, systems functioning, but among whom? Or how do we classify them? 
Bitcoin, Ethereum, these are public blockchains. Why? Because everybody is involved. Every, everybody can read and write. Everybody can do anything. I can store my data. You can store your data. And, you know, our data will be shared. And then with, like, millions of people around. So this is like a public network. Everybody is eligible to do everything. But then comes this private network inside an organization. The question is, why we need it? If we're talking about trust. Anybody? Like, you know, if, if an organization is establishing its own blockchain and, you know, having their own closed network, only their people can, you know, talk to each other in that network and share their data, not to the outside world, what use it could be? So, uh, sorry, please. Financial data. Oh, yeah, financial data. That's a good point. Like, but you must be thinking like these things are controversial. If an organization has is having a, like lots of you know numbers and records which they have, but they don't do not want to share, does it defeat the whole logic of building transparency using blockchain? But yes, the term which I've used earlier is use. Yeah, it is of use. Why? Because internally there are so many things running in an organization, and then there are so many departments as well. You know, accounts departments, finance departments, R&D team, development team, QA team, and so many, you know, other teams. So there are a lot of data running inside an organization too. So you can build transparency, transparency there. You, you got multiple offices around the globe. You can build transparency and, you know, uh, a lot of shared distributed ledger around your offices as well. And at the point when you actually need another organization to contribute, you move on to this consortium. The third one, a blockchain solution or a, a network which has multiple organizations. You know, organization A, B, C, D, E, F, they are all participating, and they are, like, you know, defined by a specific governance protocol, like who can do what. This is important. Because if, you know, if you leave them to do everything, definitely one financial institution will steal all the information of other financial institution, and they'll never want to share theirs. Is it the truth? Yes, it is. How do you th how how many of you think that this is actually of some use to us, like having these three types of net different networks, delivering three different objectives? Like you can raise your hands, like if you agree to this, that the, we 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 actually need different you know networks, not just like a public network for all the time forever. Even, you know, even even if you have three different networks, there's a point which will arrive in future when you actually require a connection between them. Without it, it cannot happen. So, you know, now we came up to like what blockchain is, types of it, you know, how it can actually, you know, help us make the ledger distributed, still keep the transparency up, security and other things. So the other component is IoT. Without IoT, we cannot actually go through a supply chain. The real challenge is there are so many physical things happening around us. People say, you know, digitize everything, but how? How are you going to do it without IoT? People say track everything. How are you going to do it without IoT? Even our cab, cabs are being tracked using GPS, isn't it? Probably everybody is using cabs nowadays. So, you know, pressure, temperature, humidity, if I'm talking about these things, location, geofencing, everything, it cannot happen without IoT. And if I'm trying to, you know, digitize my packet of, you know, some, some cookies, I cannot do it without figuring its presence out there or where it is right now. So let's go around a brief on IoT, but I would really uh, like to hear some opinions around IoT before we jump into it. Like, what do you think actually it is in a few words, if anybody would like to step up and say? So, okay, please, sir. Yeah, absolutely right. Now let's let's put the question other way around. This was very generic, and you I expected like a lot of people to stand up, but you took your time. So let's figure the let's ask the question the other way around. It's not asking what IoT is. It's asking, do you have any IoT device with you right now? How many of you you're carrying an IoT device with you? <laughs> is it costly? Like so less people are having it. I believe like it's like it's pretty simple. Everybody can have it. Your mobile phone, isn't it an IoT device? And do you, don't you have it? <coughs> Deny it, and I'll leave the stage right now. 
Yeah, so let's follow, following the gentleman, yeah. Internet is about people, computers connected through internet protocol, and what they deliver is like, it's, it's evident. We've been using it. But what IoT is, it's about computer sensors, actuators connected through internet protocols. Like a, a few more words added to it, nothing much. And these sensors are like temperature sensors, gyro, location, everything, proximity, you got everything in your pockets. And what they help us with, measure, manipulate physical properties. Our movement is a physical property. It's placed here, it's placed over there, it's outside the room, it's a physical property. You know, the size of it, the dimension, these are physical properties and that's where it helps, temperature. Anybody would like to question this, like, you know, is temperature a physical property? Yes. Please, please forgive me, I'm checking your physics. And this is the growth of IoT devices. So, you know, this is evident that without merging both the ent entities, you know, around us, which is virtual and digital, we just cannot move forward having a solution in hand, saying that this is the right solution we are having. In 2020, we are expected to reach 50.1 billion devices. So don't, you know, don't ignore the IoT device in your pocket, it counts. This is all about, you know, the subjective theories about what blockchain is, I have bored you enough. Let's move on to the actual thing, and let's, let's talk about, you know, realizing what cold chain pain points are, like food and pharma, what they are suffering with and how we can actually, you know, benefit them using these technologies. But before that, we should actually look around all the technologies. Blockchain is in the center, but, you know, it, it has got like a wide scope of, you know, things run, running around it. It's, it's, you know, communication technologies. Wireless is all about RF, your GSM, you know, your Wi-Fi wi devices. It's all about radio frequency, whatever you call it. Then power smart devices. You require low power devices because I just cannot plug in a, you know, plug in a device in a truck saying like it's measuring temperature and no, oh, sorry, it wear out in the mid, the battery ran out. That's not going to happen. And if I plug it into the, you know, truck's uh, electrical system which is generating power, it's going to turn off anyway sometime. So I need something which is consistent. But to make this thing consistent, we need to make it low power so that it can run for three years. Our phones hardly can run for a day now. You must be thinking like, you know, technology is evolving, new applications are coming in, phone cannot run for a day. How, how we are talking about like three years or five years? But this is electronics, gentlemen, and it's happening. Then there's processing power. Processing power and computing, they're like very tightly coupled. If you have more processing power, you're going to consume more power less number of days you're, you're going to operate. So computing is also, if, if, if you people are reading blogs and articles nowadays, you know what nanometer and how many transistors we're having on those chips Intel is manufacturing and other processors and other low powered computing devices and their lower TDPs, thermal design power. So you know, less heat emission, less power consumption is the future. Then cloud and big data, yeah, obviously. If we are generating, if like millions of people generating so many information, so much of it, like, like every second you're doing something, even if you're sitting right now, your phone is sending something to Google, isn't it? That doesn't mean you don't trust Google. So how they'll store it, where they'll store it, who'll answer this question? The only answer is not big data. It's not about, you know, increasing our storage just for the sake of, you know, we need to store more. We'll have also have to, you know, smart our inputs, smartify your inputs, like you, you do not, send the whole line when you need a number. You do not send 10 trucks when you need a car. That's why we are sharing cabs nowadays. And then there's smartphones. These are the most obvious devices in our daily routine. So they have a lot of role to play. And then sensor technology. Without it, it cannot happen. This is a use case today which we, we, we are going to talking about, be, be talking about around pharma supply chain. Food is no different. Pharma is like more complicated, so if we'll cover pharma, food is already covered. Don't you think so? Like, do you agree on this, that pharma is like more uh, relevant and food is around it? Uh, before, before moving on, just like a very, very vague question. How many of you have experienced fake or expired drugs until your lifetime now? I, oh, seriously. Expired or fake drugs? 
or uh, that's a good number of people probably rest are not raising hand the bigger reason is they don't know how do you know you got a fake drug so if people are not raising hands or not standing up or not saying it this is a bigger concern because they don't know how do we make sure they know it there are systems in place a manufacturing company which is an oem maybe ran a bexi sibla they're saying we are manufacturing we are shipping it it's reaching your retailers nearby stores and then your home getting delivered at your doorsteps but who's going to who's going to say like this is right or how can you actually check it yourself because if you if you are not able to check it yourself you won't trust anybody sibla is saying for 10 years like we are fake proof but you, do you believe it so these are some some of those background points on the industry like who should we trust we just talked about it like who should you trust brands are there because we believe and we trust them somebody may say like this is xy suresh and ramesh pharma i don't believe this guy sipla is like the brand ah this drug is like bulletproof but but is it really and so many labels the second point so many labels you know this certification that compliance those certifications all written on the you know these these medications and devices and food 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 items like so many compliances i don't even know that like, there is a space left on those packaging nowadays like they keep on increasing these holograms those holograms so many logos and labels and like do you guys even see those like how many of you are like who are actually looking into those labels like this is certified or not i like, guess this water bottle have you seen in front of you it's been sitting idle for like long already have you seen what label it has got no you haven't oh, sir you're trying to see no please take the liberty that's not a problem that's what we should do is it is it is the right thing to do but we are very very sure i i believe all the ladies in the room are very sure about their gold holograms aren't they <laughs> like so you know this is something which we should do this bottle has a barcode onto it just take a look it's around you is the regular thing this barcode has some information and this information is information which you can actually use you don't you don't need those big labels and those you know brand names and you know compliance labels onto it just a small code which can fetch you all the information but added adding to it the trust with the information the reliability of information the accuracy of it so that you know when you once you scan this barcode once this once you scan this qr code on the bottle or the product you say yeah what is coming up to me is trustworthy because i can see it where it is manufactured where the plastic came from where the water came from where this paper or this polymer came from which is labeled around it and you know who packaged it what warehouse it reached what truck it took what retail store it reached then and how it reached me in the end so if you see all this not just see all this if you trust all this beyond this because you know existing systems are there because of which you can see this but will you trust it because you know it's my system i can change it any time if i'll you know hand over you something i'll say don't play with my laptop you know it's very the data is very important but do i trust you on that we even don't trust our families nowadays it's being complicated so transparency is the most emphasizing aspect which we need to build then costly it systems every company is using their own arps everybody wants sap even you know the shop owner next to my home wants sap everybody is like give me sap but it's too costly nobody can have it and even you know two companies are spending on similar kind of system for similar kind of purpose twice do we really need it or they can form a consortium and say like we will use a single system a single distributed centralized non centralized ledger distributed ledger and function and you know generate benefits out of it like trust and all so do you agree like this is this is the right direction we are heading i i see some heads shaking like and some aren't moving at all so let's move on to inefficiency part the last one you know as we spoke already this truck guy who delivered my package to some warehouse on the other side of the city or maybe some other corner of the country i only will pay him when he has arrived and i'm having this converse, con confirmation from the warehouse that the goods has reached what if this guy and the the warehouse guy and the truck driver they are mixed up the goods never reached and they raised the flag okay they reached i believe them i say okay goods have reached raised the bill to the logistic guy and he's paid so the, 
then then we, we we use these papers, you know, bills and all. I need that bill from the warehouse receipt because now he's liable of this go these goods. If they haven't they they haven't reached that point, he'll be the guy who 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 will be paying the penalties. Or if they lost in the in the in the in the way, the logistic guy will be paying the penalties. So, you know, this is enhancing the efficiency. We are reducing or probably you know emitting any amount of paper we're going to use in future. Everything will be digitized and. Digitization only helps with trust and consensus. Last point is where we started. Critical care in store and transit. I don't want my drug to go or expose itself for even a second beyond the temperature range which is defined or derived by the scientists who actually developed this solution. Because chemistry is something. You, you don't change states backward. Once a chemical composition or you know foods are also chemicals in some sense, if they have changed their state, you cannot just revert. That's why expired drugs are, you know, less on potency and all. So any other point you would like to add to this, if you have in mind? Because, you know, this thing is very open. Everybody can have, you know, can have his own ideas. This is still growing. Now, beyond that, if you, if you have ever faced anything which you think like, oh, my God, this could be solved with this. Probably not now, but later, for sure. These are the problems we're going to address using blockchain and IoT. Fake drugs, drug recall. I believe like everybody know why recall happens. Can anybody would like to, you know, step up and say like about recalls? Yeah, please. Yeah, uh, you can ad address the audience, sir. Yeah. It's all yours. Uh, the car recalls. Uh, so recently there's a Honda car recalls as well. So basically when the producer itself determines that there is some problem with what they produced, they actually make it public and ask for a call callback or a call, uh, what do you call, recall. Right, absolutely. The product right. goes back to them and they fix it. Yeah, absolutely <laughs> right. But how many of us actually want our drugs to be recalled? Because, you know, at the point somebody recalls and saying that, oh, this drug composition is not right. It may harm you. And I'm like a dead guy thinking, oh man, I have consumed two of these already. So this is deadly. This is fun saying it, but you can like think of it in, on the serious note, how deadly it could be. And imagine if a hospital is consuming so many drugs a day, several trucks are arriving to the pharmacy, right back to back, one after another, those injections and all. What if something goes wrong? I have got no time to recall. But recalls cannot be avoided but tracked well in time using these kind of solutions. A truck once left a warehouse may be recalled because, you know, the temperature during the transit has reached a level which is not supposed to. So if it is happening, nowadays nobody knows. We can actually make a recall based upon the IoT inputs and we can actually trust these IoT inputs because it's not just any device. This device is another node in the blockchain. It's registered. It, it has got its own cryptographic signature. It can sign this information, send it over to these nodes, and everybody can then, using a smart contract, can decide, fine, let's call it back. And this is not, when I say everybody, this is not a human being. Machines are deciding it. So, you know, in, in coming up sessions, probably you'll hear, you hear a lot about machine learning and AI and all. So a lot of, you know, stuff is going to happen. How blockchain IoT can assist, you know, the, these these were the pain points: expired drugs, transit law, illegal production. When we say in supply chain, what is illegal production? A parallel chain is running. I'm 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 simply I'm manufacturing something. Somebody X Y Z, fake manufacturer, pharmaceutical company is also running. They are manufacturing the drugs the same way. They are having the suppliers. They are having those shops which these things are getting delivered. They are also having logistic partners. It's a parallel thing. It's running in parallel. The only thing is. We need a solution so that we can see it. We, we need to see through. So, you know, that's how we're going to do it. Continuity of information. From the very beginning of the raw material itself to the end of sale. End of sale is me, you, anybody of us. We're capturing everything. So this is continuity of information. Even the truck, even the guy, even I am, myself, I'm... It's, it's, the drug is being tracked until I receive it. And this information is generated by 
so many devices, machines, and softwares on the chain. Then accessibility of information. What use information is of if I don't have accessibility? There are two kind of accessibilities we are talking here now. One is to the machines itself, to the chain, you know, smart contracts itself, to the business logic itself, which is making sure nothing goes wrong. Other is us. You know, this information, this barcode is an information. I've got a mobile app. I can scan it. I can get some information. And if this information is backed by some trails and tracks, some trustworthy things, and like a consortium of consensus, then I can believe it. So that's how accessibility should be on two different sides. Then link between physical and digital layer. This is the most obvious one and the most challenging one. You know, I cannot say this is there and you know everything can be made this way, but most of the things are being done and will be done in future. Let's go around a little example because we are running short on time already, I believe. So let's go around a little example of it. Uh, digitizing what I feel. I feel humidity. I feel temperature. I feel pressure. Now I feel nervous because, you know, I started so bad. <laughs> so digitizing this information is something which is in need. And there are so many other parameters you can do. That's definitely going to help a blockchain, supply chain, cold chain solution. And what this other information could be, pressure of the truck's tire, maybe the fuel sensor as well. Because until now, we were only talking about different, only three sensors, but now I'm expanding it. And can you imagine, a truck is getting late every week because it runs out of fuel and it needs to refill itself. It somewhere connects to something else. What if the fuel is being tampered with? On that specific day, shipped in a specific fuel container, which comes from some oil company around some, some shore of the sea in the corner. So, you know, Starting from the supply chain, you, you can go anywhere. So this isn't, this isn't just about talking about, uh, on, on a specific use case or a specific solution. It's about starting with something, expanding it, expanding it to everything. So, you know, a pharma truck or a food chain truck, which is carrying some, some, some regular stuff, can actually trigger some bigger fraud scam caught. So that's where, you know, trust and reliability of information is needed. If I'm raising some flags, I'm saying this is not right. If I'm saying temperature has gone up, can you imagine if I have, you know, gone wrong with this information, this truck has already traveled 500 miles, now it has to come back for a recall, how much cost it is, like fuel, travel time, a lot of things. So this information needs to be accurate. So that's why we have very pre precise IoT devices. Precision is like a very, very uh, important aspect. Alongside, they have a cryptographic signature. So, you know, if I am sending it, Everybody knows I am sending it. I am an IoT device sitting inside the right corner of the truck. I am a fuel sensor. I'm, I'm another IoT device. I'm sitting in front of the driver's seat. I'm a GPS sensor. I'm, I'm, I'm having my cryptographic signature inside me. I cannot be faked. If I cannot be faked, I am the name of the trust. So we are giving trust to these tiny, tiny devices around us so that you can trust the information they provide. And two factors, augmented intelligence and application and analytics. This is how you see it, use, use it. Without using or seeing information, it's of no use. So now, before moving to the last slide, I'll just run through a very simple case which, through which you can see how a pharma chain or food chain is benefiting. Imagine an ice cream pack manufactured somewhere in the corner of your city. Now it needs to be shipped to the uh, you know, nearest supermarket. So this this thing is inside a container. A single pack is inside a bigger uh, carton, you say. Then this carton is inside a bigger container, which is a truck. Now, when I move this, this warehouse is having, you know, freezing temperatures. Now I move this carton outside the warehouse because I need to load it inside the truck. So when I move it out, it has got RF sensors and a lot of things. So I move it out, I do not have to type it inside anything, not in any system. I move it out. This IoT thing is conveying it to the system itself that this is now out how many minutes it can stay out because this is ice cream. This is not sheet metal. Before it gets into the truck, truck also has got some inward sensing devices. So as soon as I push it in, it'll be sensed. Okay, it's inside now. And now it's moving. So if temperature goes up, you know what was going to happen. So, you know, it's like reducing the, the, the manual intervention and adding 
cryptographic signatures to make sure whatever happens, we track it in terms of transactions. Nobody can tamper with those transactions. And then we are actually using this information for, for, for a lot of analytics. This is, you know, this is how the thing's going to happen and are happening. And we, we, we are, like, really, really happy and, like, fortunate that we are participating in these kind of solutions, helping other businesses to move forward using blockchain. But this is the last side. There's a twist in the chain. Is it hope or hype? And I have talked about so many things. It's, it looks very fancy. It sounds very fancy. But is it a hope or hype? I leave it up to your judgment, guys. Because if I'll keep saying so, if other speakers keep saying so, other people, blogs, writers, or technologists, they keep saying so, it won't happen until you adopt it. So if you believe, then now you can actually, when I say how many IoT devices you have, Oh, how many of you want blockchain? You should really, really raise your hand this time. So this is the twist in the chain, that can we digi digitize everything? Is it really possible? Can I digitize this table itself? Can I solve this like in a wink? No, it is not. Though people are saying like land conversion, tokenizing land and all, but there are challenges. And if we can use machine learning and AI or probably, you know, different kind of prediction algorithms to make it more robust on the top, it is still to be decided. So from my point of view, it's hope, and I want it to be a hype so that everybody wants to jump into it. And more than that, this is actually happening. So let's believe in it. Let's participate. Explore it ourselves. So when I say explore it ourselves, so do it yourself, Bitcoin technology, IoT, for the win, for the win of all. And that's uh, the last slide I'm having, so I'll say thank you, which every speaker should say in the end.